My name's Hamish Robertson and I'm a senior lecturer here at the Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia. I'm a recent arrival to QUT, having previously worked at the University of Technology, Sydney for several years. Prior to my academic experience, I worked for 15 years in the New South Wales healthcare system, including positions in multicultural health and ageing research in Sydney. My PhD research was on the geography of Alzheimer's disease in New South Wales, where it looked at the application of spatial methods to better understanding the distribution of population health and illness, and the availability of various services in meeting current and emerging community needs. My academic interests and experience cross health, aged and disability care. My background is as a health geographer. In this capacity, I've worked with a number of colleagues on a variety of issues in the disability space. Because I'm new to QUT, most of these refer to projects that I was involved in or currently am involved in at UTS. These include cross-cultural competencies for working with people with disabilities from different backgrounds with Professor Joe Travalia. Another was the estimation of intellectual disability prevalence by local government area across New South Wales and the location of and access to libraries as safe spaces for people with intellectual disability with Associate Professor Philippa Carnemola at UTS and demographer Nick Nicholas. The role of artificial intelligence, human rights and people with disability for UTS's Australian Human Rights Commission submission on emerging technologies and their implications for people with disability was another one. Uh, another is the role of space and place in a new build residential care facility for people with alcohol and other drug related mental health issues and physical disabilities with several colleagues at UTS and Uniting Care in Sydney. Perspectives on AI, raising the voices of people with disability, a cross-faculty grant project at UTS, which was led by Associate Professor Adam Berry. Uh, one of the key foci of this project was, uh, has been to ensure that people with disabilities are supported and enabled to be able to contribute their views, whatever the disability they might be living with, including communication and perception problems. Um, the right information at the right time, prototyping an interactive visual interface for disability support workers. This is another cross-faculty research project being led by colleagues in design, architecture and building at UTS. Implementing a co-designed evaluation framework prototype to improve outcomes for people with disabilities, their families and carers in partnership with ANEMDA in Melbourne and UTS as the academic partner. ANEMDA works with children with a variety of disabilities and aims to support them through school and into employment wherever possible. And lastly, the Disability Citizenship and Social Participation Monitor being led by Professor Simon Darcy at UTS. Simon has uh, an international profile in disability research and advocacy work and has worked in this space for a very long time now. One of the more profound activities I was involved with in that time was the process of establishing uh, an academic disability research network at UTS, focused on people with an active interest in working with people with disability and on projects that were relevant to them. At last count, this network had connections close to 70 academics across the university. One of my aims at QUT is to see if we can establish something similar here to build beyond the typical academic disciplinary silos and move to a more collaborative and co-productive approach to disability work, including research, advocacy and participation. Turn briefly now to my role as a health geographer. For anyone who is aware, there is a well-established history of geographers working in and with disability. For those who aren't aware, this goes back several decades and includes the work of scholars like Brendan Gleeson in his 1998 book, Geographies of Disability, which deliberately emphasised the plurality of disability geographies. Imre, Hall and others have done work in this area, not forgetting the role of feminist geography because this is an interdisciplinary field in which gender, culture and other factors play a role. Most, if not all, contemporary disability geography is premised around a social model of disability, or at least in contrast to the traditional medical model. A key issue for disability geography is therefore about not about fixing people with disability, but inquiring on the interaction between people with disabilities and their environments. My own approach is that this can be supported via a range of uh, geographic concepts and methods. That first inquiry ranges from um, the qualitative experiences of people with disabilities to the neuroscience of perception, cognition, affect and their environmental engagement in and through which issues of design continually emerge. In other words, it's not only about mapping this and spatial data collection, uh, despite the value that these can have to improving our understanding of how the inequalities often experienced by people with disabilities play out across space and place. Perhaps, obviously, it is an increasingly contested disability environment, such as Australia, uh, with NDIS funding, persistent abuses of clients and growing social and economic inequalities, having an evidence base matters more now than ever before, perhaps. 
In this sense, I believe um, being able to show who is located where, what the gaps are, and the implications of those gaps for more effective access and care for the wider field of disability care are important capabilities for advocates and care providers. So I'd like to suggest that a key factor from my perspective in disability work is the engagement with the multidimensional nature of disability and the roles of space and place, as seen from a geographical perspective, are increasingly important. In this sense, I think we should be considering generative geographies of design for disability work. Disability and space interact to produce places of and for disability, as well as potentially, and perhaps you've seen, disabling spaces and places. Design thinking can help us ensure more of the former and fewer of the latter. This is influenced by the fact that the concept of disability is changing and dynamic. Just consider, for example, neurodiversity today versus a decade ago. Our political and economic environment are fluid and social care costs are growing rapidly as the population ages. And lastly, all of these are enmeshed in a changing natural environment, which we are clearly influencing, mostly for the worse. This complex mix of factors will impact people with disability both directly and indirectly. One of the disciplines that brings value to this kind of complexity is geography, I suggest. So I'd like to suggest to you that when you think about disability at any order of magnitude, from the local to the global, that you consider what a geographical perspective might add to that picture and how it might support your engagement with disability work at whatever level you practice.